With the new league year, it makes it official. Carson Wentz is an Indianapolis Colt. I'm Lara Overton alongside the voice of the Colts, Matt Taylor, to break down this move to bring Wentz to Indianapolis as the quarterback for the 2021 season. And Matt, when you look at the trade that was made, the Colts traded a third round pick in the 2021 draft to Philadelphia, as well as a conditional pick in the 2022 draft. Right. Given the market for quarterbacks that we have seen this offseason, the deal Dak Prescott just signed in Dallas, the trade for Matt Stafford, yeah. to go to the L.A. Rams. How much of a relative value is this getting Carson Wentz at this price? Well, it's certainly not at the price of the top quarterbacks in terms of financials uh, we've seen this offseason. And so you're talking about Carson Wentz. There's so much to like here. There's so much excitement surrounding this deal. You mentioned it. he's still very young. He's still obviously in the prime of his career, 28 years old. And I just love what the Colts did in terms of the overall big picture, staying prudent, staying fiscal sound and, and kind of sticking to their guns having some of the leverage in this trade and uh, what they got what you know what they're getting plus what they had to give back is just it's, it's such a good job by Chris Ballard and uh, again you're talking about a guy that has played at a very high level he has proven it he has played on Sundays. This is not a draft pick, right? This is not a guy that you have to project. You have seen him play at an extremely high level. I kind of liken it to DeForest Buckner with that first round pick last year. You gave up the 13th pick in the first round to get a bona fide player. And that's what the Colts are doing here with a very young and a very good Carson Wentz. Obviously, 2020 didn't go the way he envisioned, but Obviously, it speaks to the confidence they have in Carson Wentz. It obviously speaks to the confidence they have in Frank Reich and his relationship at a prior stop in Philadelphia with Carson when he played at an MVP type level in 2017, you know, en route to the Super Bowl. Uh, he was probably going to win that award if he, if he stays healthy, he tears his ACL after 12 games. He was a 33 and 7 guy in terms of touchdowns to interceptions. So the Colts are getting a very, very good player who, quite frankly, didn't have the year that he wanted last year. But for the second year in a row, the Colts are kind of banking on Frank Reich, just as he did last year with Phillip Rivers, being able to be a great mentor, a great quarterback coach, a great head coach to a player he's very familiar with and has a ton of intel on. And when you look at the priority of the quarterback position, how strong was that in terms of establishing the stability going into this offseason, given the fact that Frank Reich has had four different quarterbacks now when you look at Andrew Luck, right. Jacoby Brissett, Phillip Rivers last season, this now becomes the fourth in four seasons. Yeah, four different guys, completely different guys, four years in a row, potentially are going to be, let's say, the leading passer for the Colts. That has never happened in the history of the franchise. So yeah, quarterback stability was absolutely something that this team was striving for this offseason. And again, to get a guy who's less than 30, who has a very friendly cap contract, uh, it just it makes so much sense and it just does uh, build stability. I mean, think about the offensive line. Think about Ryan Kelly. He's had all those different quarterbacks to deal with as the center. Think about guys like, you know, T.Y. Hilton. If he comes back in free agency, he's had four different quarterbacks throwing him balls in the last three years. So, you know, it's not the end all be all as we saw last year with Phillip Rivers being able to come in and kind of pick up and play at a very, very high level. But to get that continuity in terms of production on the field, familiarity on the field, both, you know, in terms of production and scheme, but also leadership inside the locker room, boy, it would just go a long way. And I can't wait for it. And I think it's going to be an absolute home run here in Indy. And there's a lot of Philadelphia flavor from that 2017 Super Bowl team when you look at the coaching staff because Frank Reich last offseason brought in Mike Groh as the wide receivers coach. Yeah. Press Taylor comes in in 2021 as the senior offensive assistant. Given all of those factors, but especially the rapport with Frank Reich and how strong that is with Carson Wentz, how confident are you that Frank can return Carson Wentz to that form we saw him play at an NFL MVP level, despite the challenges that he's endured injury-wise and confidence-wise with the way things ended in Philadelphia. Yeah, extremely confident in Frank Reich's ability to, again, mentor uh, a guy like Carson Wentz. And again, we saw it last year to go back to the Phillip Rivers 
uh, comparison. Again, all those years together with Nick Sirianni and Frank Reich and Phillip Rivers, they had intel. They, they not only knew the player, but they knew the person. And that's what Frank Reich is so good at. I mean, when, when guys talk about Frank Reich and his coaching style and his ability to get the best out of players, he doesn't coach the position, he coaches the player. And so he's going to know what buttons to push. He's going to know how to accelerate this guy and how to get the best out of him. And so from that standpoint, I'm incredibly eager to see how this goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was times last year with Carson Wentz. I mean, again, he's a great player that had a down season. So you know, not making excuses for him, but obviously at times you could argue where Carson got a little bit uh, anxious in the pocket, maybe didn't feel the pass rush as, as well as he could have, uh, got loose with the ball a little bit, got anxious on his reads, you know, fumbles were kind of an issue, uh, but it's all correctable. And that's where Frank Wright comes in. He's going to be able to look at the film and kind of put himself into Carson's shoes and say, hey, you're doing this, you're reading this, you need to look over here, those kinds of things, because he's, he's been there and done that with Carson at an incredibly high level. Again, in 17, MVP candidate, had a great 18 season. Obviously, Frank wasn't there at that time, um, but th this is a guy, again, that has played at an incredibly high level on Sundays. You're not getting a draft pick. You're not projecting this guy. He should be able to come in and play very, very well, and I'm incredibly excited for it because I think this is, this is a guy who obviously – you know, Philadelphia is a tough place to play. Mm -hmm. Fan base can be very critical. Um, so I think it's a fresh start. Uh, you know, Frank talks about confidence all the time. Even the best sometimes lose their confidence or have to rebuild that. And I think Carson's going to come in here very eager and excited and motivated to build off of last season and seasons past. Certainly thrust kind of under that microscope when you think about going from North Dakota and then straight into Philadelphia. You're into that starting role, a ton of pressure right. that comes along with it. And we know that this Colts team is in win now mode. And this is a very motivated Carson Wentz and a very excited locker room because the social media reaction immediate, immediately when the deal was reported, Kenny Moore was showing screen grabs, FaceTiming with Carson Wentz. So <laughs> so it's palpable, the excitement right, that there is. Right, he's bought in. He's absolutely, absolutely bought in. Right. How confident are you? We're talking a lot about confidence here. But with the weapons that he has, we've already heard reports that he's connected with Michael Pittman, Desmond Patman. Right. This offensive line that he has, you mentioned he got hurt in the pocket a few times. He's going to have the protection, and he's going to have this run game behind Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. Yeah, again, you know, the offensive line situation in Philadelphia last year, it was up and down. They had a lot of injuries. Production wasn't very good. I mean, Carson obviously will admit that he kind of played into it. I mean, he was sacked 50 times in 12 games. That's that's certainly not going to be the case here in Indianapolis with this offensive line. You got four of the five guys returning next year that have been together the last couple of years. It's interesting. If you look at Carson Wentz's history in terms of sacks, he is 16 and 3 in games where he has sacked less than 2 times. You know how many games the Colts have played where they've allowed less than 2 sacks since Frank Reich has been here? 30. Right, so he is, I mean, he's not going to be bottom line. He is not going to be under pressure, under duress as often as he was in Philadelphia. And so I'm excited about that. Plus, you know, there's 65 plays in a game, Lara, on offense, right? You know, maybe sometimes last year he felt like he had to make a play. As, yeah, I think it's kind of human nature, to, it's tendency, like, when things aren't going well, the season's not going well from a team perspective, you press and you start, you, you start to feel like you have to make every play. Carson Wentz is going to have to make plays here because every quarterback in the league does. But you don't have to do it 65 times a game with this offensive line and Jonathan Taylor, who has boundless potential and you know, Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell coming back. Carson Wentz has to do his job. He'll do it at a high level, but I don't think he's going to have the pressure to make a play every single play, maybe like he did in the past. When you look at this offseason, there's a lot of unknown. As hopeful as we are that you'll see, you know, training camp and, and a full schedule and maybe that offseason OTAs and all of that that we would typically be used to, there's still – a relative speculation that there's going to be a lot of virtual work and it may not be a typical spring when you're getting guys back in the building like you would be in prior years. We saw 2020 everything was virtual guys weren't able to gather and get together as much with all of this unknown. We're really not sure what the next four to five months is going to look like in terms of bringing guys back into the facility. It very well could be late July when they're all coming back together. So what right. should 
these next few months look like for Carson Wentz if the anticipation is he's ready to come in and start the regular season, right. you know, full tilt. As the guy. Yeah, as right. the guy, right. you know, hitting the ground running. Well, I think it's all about reps. You know, we talked to Ron Jaworski a couple of weeks ago when the trade kind of first went down, and he thought that the pandemic and the lack of reps and no preseason games, he thought that affected the Eagles and it affected Carson Wentz. So for me, it's about experience. It's about reps, getting in the playbook. And I think, again, for the second straight year, when you're talking about, you know, having virtual off season and the lingering effects of the pandemic, I think it does help, again, Frank Reich's relationship with a quarterback that he has mentored and built up in a prior stop. Phillip Rivers with the Chargers, now Carson Wentz with the Philadelphia Eagles. So I think there's not going to be a huge learning curve. Uh, it's, it's not going to be as steep as it might be for just a brand new quarterback, similar to how, again, it was for Phillip Rivers. And plus, we're hearing that he's working out with teammates kind of on the side all over the country. You talked about me as soon as uh, that trade went down. He started getting on the phone, started texting guys and hooking up with guys on social media, just kind of saying, hey, I'm all in. I'm all about this. That to me is the biggest thing for Carson Wentz to get acclimated up to speed, to hit the ground running whenever they can all get together again. With this move, you look at the rest of the division and things that are going on across the AFC South, this conference in general. Where does this move position the Indianapolis Colts for the foreseeable future, locking down Carson Wentz and creating the stability that you hope to have, that yeah. you're planning to have now with the quarterback position we previously haven't seen for those past three years? Right. Well, I'm excited about it. To take a step back, I think kind of big picture, the Colts – can play offensively, I think stylistically, there, at least there's a potential to be this way, similar to how they ran their offense in 2018 with Andrew Luck. I mean, I don't think that's hyperbole. I mean, I think, I think he is, you know, in terms of the physical traits and the intangibles and things like that, he is very much on par with Andrew Luck. Six foot four, 240, deceptively mobile. He's a bigger guy, not afraid to take a hit, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I think the offense in 2018, you know, with Andrew Luck, I think it could look like that next year where you have, you know, the, the deep shots back inside the arsenal, right? I mean, last year you got chunk plays with Phillip Rivers with the crossers and the overs and things like that. But the traditional deep shots that we saw with Andrew Luck, I think that's going to be part of this offense again because he's very accurate uh, and he throws a very, very good deep ball. You know, maybe some RPO stuff, some of the read option stuff. It just kind of adds another dimension, another layer to this offense that you didn't have last year with Phillip Rivers, who wasn't as mobile. But absolutely, I think the Colts are contenders inside the AFC. You know, we talked about it at the beginning of the offseason, Larry. If the Colts, if they wanted to make the postseason in 2021, they had to have good quarterback play. They, they needed above average quarterback play because, you know, last year we saw eight teams in the AFC won 10 games all seven playoff teams won 11 games, right? And those teams aren't going anywhere. The teams on divisional weekend with the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Browns, uh, the Bills, they all have their quarterback situations figured out. And those are good teams that are going to be good for the foreseeable future. So you had to have good quarterback play. But with this move and plus free agency coming up in the draft, uh, and, and I can't stress enough how important it was for the Colts to make this move, but also still hang on to their first and second round picks, those premium picks for 2021 to address the roster in other ways and other areas. That was so huge and such a well, you know, job, well, job well done, easy for me to say, <laughs> for Chris Ballard. It's been a while uh, since we've been right. back here and done But this. bottom line, I think the Colts are contenders. I think they play a tough schedule next year, but I think they can navigate it with, you know, playing the AFC, the NFC West, um, I'm, That's tough. I'm very bullish on this team, though. I, I think they can absolutely get it done and win a lot of games with Carson Wentz. When you mentioned those teams in the AFC that were there, you know, those final four teams, you're talking about teams that had quarterbacks with youth on their side and some degree of escapability yep. and mobility, which are all things that you now right. have with Carson Wentz. Well, that's what I'm so excited. That, that goes back to the mobility and kind of like playing how they played with Andrew Luck. On a third and five, you have that dimension of Carson, if things are breaking down, he can scramble and get a first down with his feet that you necessarily didn't have last year. Well, welcome home to Carson Wentz. So much to be excited about leading into the 2021 NFL season. And we will be here to break it all down as these storylines transpire and we build this roster looking ahead through the NFL draft in April and certainly to training camp and then to the kickoff to the regular season.